Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm a software developer based in Baltimore. And in this video, we're going to go over what it takes to get a developer team started. We'll also cover what typical development teams look like, some tips that make them effective, and some neat tools that you can use to make collaboration easier. Before you start assembling your team, you should have an idea of what you want your project to accomplish. From there, you can figure out what skills you need in order to make this project happen. Do you need someone who can do the front end development and another for back end? Or would some full stack developers suffice? And what about UI UX designers and people who can also do data analysis? So now it's time to assemble your team. If you're not sure where to start looking, don't worry, Codecademy's got your back. It can be a bit intimidating to reach out for the first time, but remember, everyone has been in your shoes at one point. The developer community is supportive and inclusive and always ready to help. Codecademy has set up several spaces for you to connect with other programmers, hop on a project, or start your own. There's the forums, the Facebook group, and the lifelong learner Slack community for pro users. The pro Slack community has some extra resources and guidance for working on group projects from other people who've worked on them before. Links to all of these spaces are down below. Don't forget, there are also local meetups. Once you've got a team going, it's a good idea to set up a meeting to make sure everyone is on the same page. Here, you can outline all of the requirements that your project should be able to accomplish, figure out what each person wants to accomplish, and set team norms, like what tech is each person used to working with and how much time can they commit, things like that. This part is really important because it aligns everyone's expectations with the team goals. I've been on teams where we weren't clear enough with our expectations from the beginning, and there ended up being a lot of unfinished work, so some of the members had to shoulder on more of the work to make up for the missing gaps. There was one time where we had one team member that could no longer make the time commitment, but the show must go on, right? So we familiarized ourselves with the skills and contributions the member was making and filled in those gaps. My experiences with this team ended up being really helpful in my later teams working in the industry because it's common to have team members jump to different projects. Your team may also want to consider setting roles to be better organized, particularly if you have a larger team with a more ambitious project. As you're figuring out what roles each person will fulfill, take a look at what each person can bring to the table and what they want to improve. Group projects are always a good learning opportunity and the best place to explore out of your comfort zone and try something new. Not everyone is going to be perfect in every role, but you have your team members to rely on for feedback and suggestions for improvement. You may also want to have someone to fill the team leader role to make sure that the team as a whole is organized and on track. And if you have a more ambitious project, like creating a mobile app for a lawn care service, your team may also want to assign leads to own different parts of the project. These leads will take ownership of a feature and make sure that it gets done. This can be especially helpful if you're in a situation where the majority of your members are remote. Most enterprise teams follow a development methodology to organize their work. It gives the team transparency so every member is kept up to date with the project's progress and contributing together as a team. If you have a sizable team, like more than two or three people, I recommend following one of these methodologies. It'll help move your project's progress along more quickly and help you learn how to work as part of a real-world dev team. We've got lots of resources on the different structures you can follow down below. It's up to your team and your dynamics to figure out which one will work best. If you're not sure which one to choose and you want more structure, try shooting for Scrum first. Otherwise, go for Kanban and then make modifications towards something that will work. Unfortunately, we can't read each other's minds. So that's why making sure you're regularly communicating with your team is really important. This can be anything from getting help on something you're stuck on to sharing a new find that you have for doing something. There was one time where I hadn't updated my team that I was working on a new task, and our tech lead hadn't updated our team that there was going to be a change in the task I had picked up. So when I was done with the task, I found out that all my work had to be scrapped because we were changing our approach. One way to avoid all of that is to schedule a recurring meeting for everyone to get together and also people can update their progress on the project. It can be once a week or twice, depending on availabilities. During these meetings, the team lead can check in and identify the project's progress relative to the team's goals. And if needed, they can readjust the priorities and task assignments. If you have a more casual project, then you can be more informal with your team, particularly if you don't really have a deadline in mind. 
Otherwise, you may want to start with a more structured system of how your work is going to be created, reviewed, and accepted. So this means setting priorities and deadlines on the tasks that your team has split out. You can also take advantage of Git's pull requests to review each other's work and gain insight into your teammates' perspectives. Pull requests are probably where I've grown the most as a programmer because there are so many different ways to do something. When I get feedback on my code, the reviewer can highlight a really clever way I hadn't thought of before. It also forces me to be more attentive to details and pushes me to find creative and optimal solutions. Take advantage of your collaborative environment to ask questions and also help your team members with theirs. You don't always have to know the right answer to something right off the bat, but when there's a question that you can't answer, it's a good opportunity for you to research the answer together. Working on a team is exciting, especially with how much more you learn than if you were to develop on your own. So it can be tempting to overpromise, but don't let that discourage you. Just take it as a learning opportunity to get to know your own limits and pace better, and next time you can make the right adjustments. Now that everyone is organized and ready to roll, it's time to start working on the project. I'll link any resources I mentioned down in the description. There are a lot of great online tools that can help you share and collaborate on some quick code snippets. You can use JSFiddle, Repolit, or CodePen.io. Just note that JSFiddle and CodePen are really more if you're writing code for front-end web development. They are low commitment since you don't even need an account to use any of these. And they also do the hard work of setting up the environment with the basic dependencies you need so you can just start coding right away. But for collaborating on a large-scale project, I highly recommend using Git. Codecademy has a free course and some helpful videos on getting you started with Git if you haven't used it before. What's great about it is that it'll help your team with version control, especially when you and your other teammates are working on the same files at the same time. You can also use GitHub or GitLab to store all of your projects. They'll help you build out your repertoire and you can share them with anyone, even potential employers. Feel free to check out the link below on more info about Git and GitHub. Pretty much every team I've worked on uses Git, and I even use GitLab in my work now. You'll also want some kind of way to track your tasks and assign them to team members. If you're just getting started, Asana and Trello are some solid options that will give you the functionality you need and more. For communication, Slack and Discord are really good options. They make it really easy to share files, code snippets, and make video and voice calls. The video calls also have screen sharing available. You can also quickly look for previous messages or shared files from any given person at any given time, including yourself. And if you want to be super hardcore, there are a lot of integrations you can insert into your channels, like Asana and Google Calendars. If you're in the pro Slack community, you can just get started with DMs or private channels, but it's also pretty easy to just set up your own free workspace. These are just some things to keep in mind as you're working on a team. Not every solution will work for every situation, but starting a group project is a great way to build out your team skills. Good luck!